grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The Spirit of God is upon us. We are called to be God's people. The Spirit of God is upon us. We are called to be the body of Christ. Come, let us worship God this day, who binds us together in love and service. Remembering the Word made flesh, we gather in the light of Christ, of which this candle is a sign. Let us pray. Beloved God, you have blessed us with so many gifts. In this time of worship, may we be open to receiving these gifts. Help us to claim our gifts and use them to bring liberation and justice to a hurting world. May the words of our mouths and meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you. May the transforming spirit of joy and unity bind us together as your body, that we may be your hands and feet and voice in this, your world. Hear us as we pray together wherever we are. The words of the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Good morning and welcome to you all. Uh, to this online service for Valway United Church in Point Claire, Quebec on January the 23rd. I'm Reverend Dr. Scott Hunter, the pastor of the church, and I bid you all welcome. We also thank our musician, Dr. Judy Hung, for music during the service today. Um, as you are aware, we continue in this format until the government permits us to be open. Um, it is prudent to do this right now. And so we wait until it is safe to be open and gather once again. Various boards in the church are meeting by Zoom. So watch your emails for coordinates so that you can join in with the board that you're a part of. You'll also hear in the days ahead about occasional Zoom coffee hours. Um, coordinates will also be provided via email for that. So in the meantime, get your booster shots as age categories permit. Watch your email for church notifications. Offerings. You can mail checks to the church. You could send the email transfers to the treasurer. You could set up PAR, pre-authorized remittances. Or you could drop off monies at the church by arrangement. Use whatever means you find most comfortable. Keep safe in the meantime, and if you have an emergency, you can contact me by phone. My cell number is on the church answering machine for you. Young people, when you feel low, what brings your spirits back up again? How could you help bring the spirits of others back up also? Standing alone at recess, Jean felt down that day. He had a lot on his mind, the way he had treated his mother that morning, the way he kicked at the dog on the way to school, the, the rude way that he treated his teacher. One thing after another just seemed to happen, and he blamed himself for everything. Now, Brandon, Jean's friend, saw him standing by himself. Jean, what's wrong, Brandon asked. But 
Jean didn't answer. Brandon didn't give up though either. Finally, Brandon said, why don't you join us to play some snow football at recess? At first, Jean turned away. Then he thought to himself, well, why not? Jean walked towards Brandon and, and walked towards the teams that were forming. And within 10 minutes, Jean had forgotten all about his problems. And he was involved in the game running and slipping and blocking and catching passes. Jean just enjoyed playing with his friends. When the recess bell rang, Jean tapped Brandon on the shoulder. Oh, thanks for asking me to play, Jean said. That really was a lot of fun. Like Jean, the people of Jerusalem in the book of Nehemiah cried when they heard God's law. Why? Well, because their, their forefathers, their, their grandfathers, their grandmothers were, were taken away by invaders and their city burned to the ground. But they returned. Their tears were for their ancestors' sins and the, the city that they were rebuilding. They had a lot of bad things come to them. And they had a lot of bad news. But like Brandon, Ezra told the people to celebrate, to have fun, to feast, because they were home and someday the city would be great again. That apparently is the way God wants it. So if things happen to get you down, find something fun and celebrative to do. Do that same thing with other people and live in God's promise that things will change. You could also invite someone else into that. Not only could you change it up, but you could help someone else to change it up too by inviting them into some fun. You think about that for a few minutes, young people, as we all here together the scripture readings for the day. From the Old Testament, from the book of Nehemiah, chapter 8, selected verses. All the people gathered together into the square before the water gate. They told the scribe Ezra to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had given to Israel. Accordingly, the priest Ezra brought the law before the assembly, both men and women and all who could hear with understanding. This was on the first day of the seventh month. He read it facing the square before the water gate from early morning until midday in the presence of the men and the women and those who could understand. And the ears of all the people were attentive to the book of the law. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was standing above all the people. And when he opened it, all the people stood up. Then Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people answered, Amen, Amen, lifting up their hands. Then they bowed their heads and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. So they read from the book, from the law of God, with interpretation. They gave the sense so the people understood the reading. And Nehemiah, who was the governor, and Ezra the priest and scribe, and the Levites who taught the people, said to all the people, this day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep. For all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Then he said to them, Go your way, eat the fat, drink sweet wine, and send portions of them to, for those for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to our Lord. And do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. This reading is the word of the Lord. Thanks be. God. The Gospel reading today comes from the Gospel of Luke chapter 4 verses 14 to 21. We read, Then Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee, and a report about him spread through all the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The 
The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. He rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. This is the gospel of Christ. Thanks be to God. This past week, I, I got to watch one of my favorite movies, When Harry Met Sally. The Rob Reiner film with Billy Crystal and Meg Ryan. I'm a real sucker for Meg Ryan. I love, though, the little vignettes of older married couples that were talking about how they happened to meet, recalling in their own words the, the love that they have shared. Now, I have to tell you, it's a movie, and these aren't actually real couples. I was absolutely surprised to find that out, but they sure were convincing because of the words they each used to describe each other. Perhaps it is the way we would all like to remember the one we have loved. The words simple and believable, we would all like to be able to use. Words, end words that, that sum it all up, our connection with the one we love. Well, our lives are full of words. Some matter more than others. The words we use to invite someone on a first date, for instance, rather than all the other dates since. The words we use to apologize as opposed to the words we use to hurt, the words we use to say goodbye to a loved one for the last time, in contrast with a thousand other goodbyes that we have said. This week's Gospel reading, we're, we're treated to those kind of words, not last words, but first words, ones that are special, that are talking about what is to come. The first words that Luke records of Jesus, which makes this scene very important to understanding who Jesus is and what he is up to. So what kind of picture is created by these words? Well, they are an announcement of Jesus' mission. It's a description of the kingdom of God. It's a promise of God's aid and presence. And all of this and more is summarized by the words, good news. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Now, this reference is about the year of Jubilees proclaimed in the Law of Moses. Every 50th year, there was to be a year of the Lord's favor. Land was to be returned to its original owner or their heirs and indentured servants. Those who were enslaved to pay off debts were to be released. A, a kind of economic equalizer, wealth sharing of a sort, an end to accumulation, beginning of fairer distribution, Good news for some, bad news, I guess, for others. A good news, bad news story in many different ways, depending on who you happen to be. One thing stands out, though, if you listen closely, is that this good news is only good if you're willing to admit how hard it is in your life, what is lacking, what has been most difficult. It's not good news in general, but rather good news for the poor. It's not just release, but release for those who are captive, sight for those who are blind, freedom for those who are oppressed. And so do you see what I mean? God offers words of comfort, but such words only mean something to those who are living with discomfort. How do you think we hear those words today? 
I mean, we spend a lot of time acting as if we've got it all together. We spend money trying to look better, get fitter, appear younger. There's pressure on us externally from our culture and internally from ourselves to not need anything or anyone. So that it makes you wonder if Jesus' message has any value or can find any purchasing power among today's listeners. Except for one thing. The stories that we tell ourselves about being perfect Commercials that we pay attention to telling us we really can have it all. Ads that promise us that if we just buy this product, we'll, we'll never feel insecure or down again. These are all false. And the bad news is that deep down we already know it. So while Jesus' message is good news, in order for us to hear it that way, perhaps it must first strike us as bad news the bad news that perhaps we are not who we want to be, or can be, or should be, or never will be. Jesus comes bringing good news to those in need, and those who don't see and admit their need will, will want nothing to do with them. But when we can admit that need, when we can be honest about our hurts and fears and longings, Will things happen? First, we feel a, a kind of freedom simply from admitting the truth. Bad news, when it's true, is still better than a pretty little lie. Something just feels good about the truth. Second, we can receive the help and comfort that God offers. Release, sight, healing, freedom, and more. And finally, we realize that we don't simply receive help and comfort, but we're also invited to offer it to others. We're invited, that is, not just to hear and receive good news, but to be it. This, in a sense, is, is what the, the church, the body of Christ, the community of faith is. God's hands delivering the promise of good news to all who come in need. Afraid? Well, we may invite those around us to come here and find courage. Lonely? Come, join, relate with our community. Sick? Come here, or, or better, let us come to you to care for you. Isolated? Well, we'll visit you. Discouraged? Well, let's gather together and encourage one another lift each other's spirits. Jesus said, this day, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. Embrace those first words and the Christ who offered them and let that truth be in you, not just for yourself, but for others too. Amen. Let us bow once again in a moment of prayer. Let us pray. Beloved God of patience and persistence, scriptures from Isaiah's scroll were not new to the people gathered on that day long ago for worship. Many times before they had heard those words, and in their hearts they hoped that jubilee could become a reality in their lives. Jesus proclaimed that you had called him to bring good news to the poor, to proclaim release to captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. How startled they were, as are we, by the words and truth what he says to us today. Beloved God, no more lip service, no more fear, no more waiting. The time has now come. Sometimes we want others to pick up the reins and lead the charge and to do the work, but you, O oh God, through the witness of Jesus, call each of us to the task 
The promise of hope and justice is given to the world, and we are bearers of that promise. And now is the time for work and witness, and now is the time for hope and peace, and now is the time for each one of us to do our part in establishing the kingdom. Beloved, make us ready to serve. Pick us up. Dust us off. Use us on the pathways of justice. In Christ's name, we offer this prayer today. Today, O oh God, we also pray for others. We pray this day for Hudson, for his family, and his friends, and those who provide care for him. We pray for Holden, and for Greta, and Joan, and Elizabeth, and Harry, and Jim, and Bill, and Bernice, and Sandra, for folk at the Wellesley and young families of all descriptions in our neighborhood. Bless them in their joys and in their struggles, that they might continue to live courageously as your own. We also pray this day for people at Residence Vigi, the Seash SLD, not too far from here, locked down again because of COVID-19 within. We pray for those who are concerned, for residents, for workers, for families. Bring your own comfort and healing, both here in this place and also in other places, afflicted in similar ways, whether they are here in our own city, or in our province, or in our country, or in other places around this world. Help us, O oh God, to be people who are ready to be involved in ministries of peace and justice and love, bringing the light of your hope to those who dwell in shadows and fear this day. May your spirit indeed be upon us, that you might use us redemptively this week. In the name of Christ, we pray, O oh God. Amen. Receive now these words of benediction. The Spirit of God is upon you. Go forth proclaiming God's love and liberation. The Spirit of Christ is upon you. Go forth to live lives of justice and freedom. The power of the Spirit is upon you. Go forth as one body, one spirit, one witness. To the promises of God. Go now with the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.